It's well known that the out-of-box experience for the PlayStation Classic was a huge letdown. But the Project Eris mod changed all of that by allowing you to add the PlayStation 1 games that you want to play to the system. And with the addition of emulating over 30 game systems through RetroArch and Emulation Station, you can now load up thousands of other games to your liking. Let's get your PlayStation Classic modded up the right way. I've seen a lot of guys that in the past didn't do a good job of covering this, and it's important. You'll need to use a USB drive that's compatible with the PlayStation Classic in order for all of this to work properly. I have this wiki webpage linked for you in the video description. It has access to a list of all of the well-known USB compatible drives that work with the PlayStation Classic. I think the most important piece of information you can take away from all of this is that the PlayStation Classic USB ports are low powered. You can typically use USB 2.0 drives without an additional powered USB hub. But if you plan to use a USB 3.0 drive, you'll almost certainly need a powered USB hub to support it. The Project Eris mod itself has reached a special degree of maturity because it's reached version 1.00. It's hosted at the Mod My Classic website and I have it linked for you in the video description. Scroll down below the video tutorial guide you see to the download section. Look for the listing that says Download Project Eris version 1.0.0 full package download. Click on the link to download the package to your downloads folder. And while it's downloading, let's go ahead and grab the GUI format software from the Rich Crop Consulting Limited website. I also have this link for you in the video description. This program helps format large volume USB storage into FAT32 format, which you'll need to do. Just click the big graphic right in the middle of the page to download the program to your downloads folder. I have the downloads folder open on the left side in File Explorer, and I've just inserted a USB drive, which I'm going to put on the right side. Make sure you know exactly which drive letter represents the USB storage you just inserted into your computer. To get the drive formatted in FAT32 format, double click the GUI format executable file. Then at the UAC prompt, click on yes to continue. Take a close look at the target drive letter at the top left corner of the GUI format window. Make sure the letter shown here matches the letter of the USB drive you inserted. For example, in this case, it's drive G. You also need to rename the drive. Although I'm partial to the name subscribe for drives, you'll need to rename the drive Sony, S-O-N-Y, all capital letters. Now that you have the right drive with the right name, click on start. Then at the confirmation prompt, click OK to format your drive in FAT32. And you might very well receive this error message. If you do, don't worry, this is an expected behavior. Let me show you what to do to fix it. If you run into this issue with GUI format, you just need to format your drive in XFAT first and then try again. Close out GUI format and locate the storage device on your computer. You just need to format it like you would any other drive in Windows. Select Format and make sure that it's set to XFAT for the type. Then click Start near the bottom right corner to format the drive and at the confirmation prompt select OK. Give your computer a moment and your drive will be reformatted in XFAT format. Click OK to close the confirmation prompt, then click Close in the bottom right corner to close the Format tool. Now you can relaunch GUI format by double-clicking on the application icon and clicking on Yes at the UAC prompt. Alright, let's try this again. Make sure the drive letter in the top left corner matches the letter of the USB drive you've inserted into the computer. Be sure to change the drive name to Sony, S-O-N-Y, all capital letters. Then come down to Start in the bottom right corner and click. Then at the confirmation prompt, click OK. Aha! See, now it's working correctly. If you run into that problem, now you know how to fix it. Once you have the drive formatted in FAT32, you can close out GUI format. For Windows to pick up your newly formatted drive, all you need to do is unplug it, and then plug it right back in. I'm going to keep the Downloads folder open on the left, and the newly formatted FAT32 drive open on the right. Next step, we'll need to uncompress the file that we downloaded that contains the files for Project Eris. Just right-click on it, and select Extract All. You can extract the files directly into the pre-designated folder. This actually takes a couple of minutes in real time, even on an M.2 drive. Once it's extracted all of these files, you can go back into the Downloads folder and delete the zip file in order to eliminate clutter from your computer. Navigate to the folder that you just uncompressed and double-click into it. Inside this folder, you'll see several subfolders. Just grab everything that you see here and drag and drop it directly onto the root of your USB storage device. And again, this is going to take a few minutes in real time. 
Once all of the folders and files have copied over to your USB storage device, you can remove it from your computer and insert it into the rightmost front USB port on your PlayStation Classic. But don't plug in the PlayStation Classic or power it on just yet. We've got some extra steps to consider first. Your PlayStation Classic should look something like this. You've got the USB drive plugged into the rightmost front port, but the system isn't plugged into power just yet. Go ahead and plug in power to the back of the system now and wait about 5 seconds for the power indicator light to turn amber. Once the light turns amber, you can press the power button to turn on the system, which will turn the power light green. I recommend you use this process for every boot up of your PlayStation Classic moving forward. When the system boots, you'll see the normal Sony Interactive Entertainment splash screen. But instead of going into the regular main menu for your PlayStation Classic, you'll see the Project Eris logo. It's creating a full backup of your internal firmware on your PlayStation Classic onto your USB drive. Then it will install key components of Project Eris onto your system. Once it's done, you'll hear a series of chimes and you'll see a splash screen that everything is complete and your system will automatically power down in 5 seconds. Once the system powers down, go ahead and remove the USB drive from your PlayStation Classic and put it back in your computer. Back on your PC, with the USB drive inserted, it's probably going to look something like this. You've still got an open downloads folder on the left, and now you've got the USB drive represented on the right here. Go ahead and close out the downloads folder for now. You'll need to create a new folder, and I'm just going to create it on the desktop. You can name this folder anything you want. In this case, I'm just going to name it PSC Backup so I know what it is. The end goal here is to create a backup on your computer of everything that's on the USB drive for two reasons. One is we're going to need to reformat the USB drive in NTFS format. And the other is, remember that Project Eris created a backup of your system software on your PlayStation Classic. Go ahead and grab everything that's on the USB drive and drag and drop it onto your computer in that folder that you created so that you have a permanent archive of what was on your PlayStation Classic from the factory. Cool, now that everything's backed up, we can format the USB drive itself into NTFS format. This does not require any special software, Windows can do this for you automatically. Just make sure that you've selected the correct drive either in this PC or on the side navigation inside File Explorer moving forward. Right click on your USB drive and select Format. From the list of drop down choices, make sure that you change XFAT, FAT32 or anything else over to NTFS. Make sure that the volume label for the drive is still SONY in all capital letters. Then scroll down to the bottom to start and click on start to continue. Then the confirmation prompt, click on OK to format the drive in NTFS format. Once your drive has been formatted, click on OK to close the confirmation prompt. Then either close the format window at the bottom or click on the red X in the top right corner. If your drive is not immediately recognized by Windows, just unplug it and plug it right back into the same USB port like you did before. In this case, it was recognized. I'm going to grab the File Explorer window and move it over to the right and it represents the root of the USB drive. Now you'll need to go back into the folder where you archived all of the stuff from the USB drive previously and copy everything that's in that folder right back onto the USB drive. The goal here was basically just to convert the drive from FAT32 over to NTFS format so that the newly modded Project Eris PlayStation Classic can utilize the content. Let's take a moment to do some quick cleanup on your computer. Navigate back to the Downloads folder on your PC. You can delete that folder that you previously uncompressed with the Project Eris files in it. You don't need this anymore, and you've backed everything up in its own archive at this point. However, I think it's a great idea to save the GUI format program somewhere because you'll likely need it again somewhere in the future. Remove the USB drive from your computer, put it back into the rightmost port on your PlayStation Classic, plug it in, wait the 5 seconds, and once you see the amber light, press the power button to power on your PlayStation Classic once again. When the system powers on, you'll see the same old Sony Interactive Entertainment screen that you've always seen. But this time, you'll get the full Project Eris menu, which includes RetroArch, Project Eris, and Emulation Station. Let's go through these one at a time so that you can understand where to put content on the USB drive so you can play your favorite games your way. Pull the USB drive back out of your PlayStation Classic and put it back in your computer. The first thing we're going to take a look at is how to play your PlayStation 1 games on your newly modded PlayStation Classic. I have games already pre-staged on the left side and the root of the PlayStation Classic's USB drive on the right. 
Navigate to the folder called Transfer and double click into it. Then locate the folder with your PlayStation 1 game. In this case it's Castlevania Symphony of the Night and the files are in .bin.q file format. Grab all of the binq files from inside the folder that contains your game. Simply drag and drop them all into the transfer folder on the USB drive. That's it. All you have to do now is just remove the USB drive from your computer, put it back into your PlayStation Classic, plug it in, and power it on. Like before, you'll be greeted with the Sony Interactive Entertainment splash screen. When it goes past the splash screen, you'll see the Project Eris logo. Once you get past the Project Eris logo, you'll be sent to the main boot menu. Select Project Eris with the X button to continue. You'll be taken to the main rotary menu as usual. However, this time you'll have access to the content you've loaded up. Check this out. Here's Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and it even has the artwork preloaded. Nice! To launch the game of your choice, simply press the X button. You'll see the PlayStation BIOS startup screen, and your game will load normally as though it was already a part of the console. Awesome! But what about all of those other games that aren't PlayStation 1 games? Well, that's what RetroArch and Emulation Station are for. Let's check them out together to see what needs to be done to get them up and running. Back at the main boot menu, use the D-pad on the PlayStation controller to slide over to the left to RetroArch and select it with the X button to launch it for the first time. And you'll be greeted with this jarring light mode menu. The only thing you need to do is slide over to the right, then push up, and select Quit RetroArch with the X button. It allows RetroArch to create some folder structure on the USB drive that we'll need to use in just a moment. You'll be returned to the main menu, power off your PlayStation Classic, and put the USB drive back in your computer. RetroArch for the PlayStation Classic only ships with one emulator or one core, but they're all readily available on the Libretto website. I have it linked for you in the video description. Scroll down through the list of choices until you find the following file. It's called underscore allcores.zip. Click on the file to download it to your downloads folder on your computer. You and I, we're gamers and we're all about winning. Winning with RetroArch is all about putting the files in the right places on the USB drive. Start by extracting the newly downloaded set of cores from your downloads folder. Once they're completely extracted, delete the zip file in order to eliminate clutter. If you haven't already, insert your USB drive into your computer. I'm going to put the downloads folder on the left again and the root of the USB drive on the right. Navigate to the downloads folder and double click into the newly uncompressed cores folder you'll see a list of all the available cores that you can add to RetroArch. Navigate over to the root of the USB drive. You'll find a folder here called Project underscore Eris. Double click on this folder. Okay, watch carefully here. Inside this folder, you'll find another folder that's called Opt, O-P-T. Navigate to the O-P-T folder and double click into it. Inside the Opt folder, you'll find a RetroArch folder. Double click on the RetroArch folder. You'll find a folder inside RetroArch called Config. Double click on that folder. Inside the Config folder, there's only one folder called RetroArch. Double click on that folder. And inside this folder, you'll find a folder called Cores. Locate that folder and double click into it. This is where the cores for RetroArch live. To add all of your favorite cores to RetroArch, simply go back over to the downloaded folder that you uncompressed and drag and drop and copy everything that you see in this folder then paste it all inside the folder that you just navigated to on the USB drive. Some of these emulators need BIOS files in order to work correctly. To put these files in the right place, go back two levels in the navigation on the USB drive. You'll be in that first RetroArch folder. You'll see a subfolder in here called System. Double click on the System folder and this is where the System BIOS files will need to live. I have my System BIOS files already pre-staged in a folder on the C drive called Demos. They're in a subfolder called System. Locate your System BIOS files wherever they reside on your computer. From here, you can simply drag over all of your System BIOS files and then drag and drop them directly into the System folder on the USB drive. Meatloaf used to say two out of three ain't bad, but without the third thing, the ROMs themselves, you won't be able to play any games. Fortunately, this is the easiest part. The ROM folder lives directly on the root of the USB drive. So all you have to do is go back to the root of the USB drive and you'll find a folder there called ROMs. Locate that folder and then double click into it. You'll find a series of subfolders inside the ROMs folder. These subfolders are already pre-labeled with the types of content that you can put in them. Simply insert your ROMs in compressed or uncompressed format in these folders as appropriate. All right, you know the drill here. Insert the USB stick back into the rightmost port on your PlayStation Classic, 
plug it in, wait on the amber light, and power on your system. Once again, when the Project Eris main menu comes up, navigate to the left of RetroArch and select it with the X button. Oh yeah, I've done the good deed here of setting it into dark mode. Let's test a game and system that requires a BIOS file to make sure everything's set up correctly. First step, use the D-pad to move over to the right to Load Core and select Load Core with the X button. I'm going to test Atari Lynx as it requires both a ROM file and a BIOS file to work correctly. So I'm going to select an emulator that's appropriate for this. In this case, the Beetle emulator for Atari Lynx. Navigate to the core of your choice and select it with the X button. Next up, you'll need to load content. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to select load content and press the X button. In my testing, I wasn't able to import content and create playlists inside RetroArch, so you'll have to manually locate the directory on your USB drive for your content. To do this, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to the directory listing that has only the forward slash character on it, and select it with the X button. From here, keep pressing the X button on the listing that says Parent Directory until it takes you all the way back to the root of your USB storage. From here, you'll see those listings of folders, including the ROM folder. That's the folder that has your content on it. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to the listing that says ROMs and select it with the X button. You'll find all of the subfolders with your ROM files here. In this case, I'm looking for Atari Lynx, so I'm going to use the D-pad to scroll down to the Atari Lynx folder and select it with the X button. Hmm, all of these games to choose. Which one should I launch? I know, I'll pick one of my arcade favorites, Stun Runner. So I'm going to use the right one button on the controller because right one skips pages ahead at a time and saves time instead of the usual D-pad scrolling up and down to get to the content you want. Locate the ROM file that you want to launch and select it with the X button. From the list of menu choices that appear, select Current Core with the X button. See, now we've confirmed that the ROM files, the system BIOS files, and the system cores are all in the right places and they're all working correctly. But what about that emulation station? Because let me tell you, loading up games this way is going about it the hard way. Check this out. This time from the Project Eris main menu, slide over to the right to ES and select it with the X button. You'll be presented with a sliding menu of all of the game systems that have ROMs and system BIOS files ready to go. In this case, just this one. So I'm going to select Links with the X button here to drill into the submenu for Lynx games. And sure enough, the games are listed on the right and their details are listed on the left. Let's test a different game this time. Let's go to another one of my arcade favorites, Zybots. Select the game of your choosing on the right side with the X button. Now that is a much better way of going about launching these games. And you'll find as you build your library of games on the USB drive, the systems will auto-populate on the navigation ribbon. Playing your favorite games through emulation on your TV is one thing, but what about taking your games on the go? Check out this video on playing your favorite Sega-based games on your PlayStation Vita or PlayStation TV. It's shown here on screen and linked in the video description and pinned comment.